our topic is talking about the Gauss law for electricity and its application. The Gauss law says that the total electric flux through a closed surface is equal to the net or the total electric charge inside the surface divided by the permittivity of a vacuum. So mathematically, the total flux in a closed surface, this is the closed surface, is the dead product of the electric field to the differential area vector. And this is also equal to summing up all the charges, we call this as the total charge, enclosed charge, divided by the permittivity of the empty space. Now, to understand this clearly, Consider a charge 1 with, with a positive charge or, or it can be negative. Then at charge 2, it can be negative or positive or both. Or charge 3, positive or negative or any charges. And if we enclose this charge into a surface known as the Gaussian surface, then finding the electric flux by definition of electric flux is to consider a differential area then take the normal the normal is perpendicular to the area very very small or infinitesimal area then these charges will provide an electric field to this area so the total electric field of these charges will be at the surface area of the infinitesimal so therefore there must be an angle between the normal vector and the electric field vector so taking the dot product of this, the result, dot product, and take the integral of the close, close integral, it covers the entire surface area of the Gaussian surface. So the answer is the total flux produced by the enclosed charge to the enclosed surface. Now it is equal to, for simplicity, we can sum up everything, you can sum up charge 1, charge 2, and charge 3, then sum up algebraically, then divide it by the permittivity of the vacuum, then there is still the same, the electric flux of the entire surface of the enclosed surface. Okay? So, where the P, uppercase of PE is the electric flux of a closed uh, close surface whose unit is newton meter square per coulomb then E is the electric field vector whose unit is newton per coulomb and the differential area vector is the infinitesimal normal area vector whose magnitude must be of unit must be meter square and the uh, QE in CL is the total or algebraic sum of the enclosed charges with a unit of C per column. And the permittivity of a vacuum, which has a unit of centimeter of uh, column square per newton meter square, whose value is 8.854 times 10 raised to negative 12 column square per newton meter square. So this is the principle of Gauss law. Now, what's the use of this? This is very important because the, the Gauss law uses the symmetry. If you want to have a simple process, then we have to go with symmetry. So, Gauss law provides symmetry, which means that we can we can solve the electric field in this law using only the enclosed charge, the permittivity, and the differential area. So, meaning, we can calculate any electric field distribution due to the charge surrounding charges. So, in order to 
to understand clearly what's the use of the ghost law, let's have the application problem. Now, in this module, we will provide the derivation of the electric field of a point charge using ghost law. Then, in the next problem, we will be finding the electric field of an infinite line charge. Remember that in the previous topic, the infinite line charge was derived using the integration, a lot of integration processes. We consider a very, very small charge, then we consider it at a point charge, then we extend it through calculations, then we undergo a rigid activity on the calculus part. Now, we solve it again now using Gauss law. And this is an effortless process provided you know the principle of Gauss law. So, you, we can encounter that one in this module. Then we will also find in the, the electric field on on an infinite sheet and also with the parallel plate. Meaning, what is the electric field within the parallel plates? Okay? So, for the first application, the application of Gauss law to the electric field of a point charge particle. So, consider a charge Q at this point. Then, we want to know how much electric field at this point at the distance R. So, we are, we are to calculate how much is the electric field in terms of Q and R. Now, to answer this problem is we have to use the Gauss law. Now, take note, Gauss law requires Gaussian surface. So, meaning we will enclose this charge to a closed surface. Now, since this is point charge, we can use the spherical surface. So, our Gaussian surface is a kind of spherical. So, therefore, we have a charge enclosed to this surface. Now, take note, according to the law, the, the electric flux total is the total enclosed charge divided by permittivity, which is also equal to the integral, the closed integral of the electric field that the differential vector. So, therefore, we will find the electric field using this equation. In terms of the electric field, the infinitesimal area and the enclosed charge with the permittivity. So, first is we have to consider a very, very small, call it as infinitesimal uh, area A. So, tan, tan, uh, normal to that area is the vector, the differential infinitesimal area vector. So, take note that we have the angle between the electric field and the normal area area vector is equal to zero because they are parallel because this charge is in the center at the center of the sphere so therefore using the formula the closed integral of of the dot product of the electric field this electric field that this vector is equivalent to the enclosed divided by the permittivity of the in empty space so, substituting the values, A is the unknown. So, we can, by the way, we can use the magnitude of the, the magnitude of the electric, uh, the dot product of A dot infinitesimal A. So, this will become A cosine of P, cosine because this is the parallel. We are trying to obtain the component parallel to the uh, infinitesimal vector A. So, this angle, take note, is the angle between the two. So, therefore, in this case, our angle is zero because they are parallel. So, therefore, this is zero. This is unknown. So, therefore, we can take it out, take outside because this will not change after integrating. And this one is the charge Q. The enclosed charge is Q. And this is 8.854 times 10 to the 12. So, therefore, 
uh, take it out, then the integral of the differential area. This is cosine of 0 is 1, so it disappears. This is actually 1. And the limit of the integral must start from 0, meaning the area is 0. Then we will integrate it towards the area of the spherical. The area of the sphere is, take note, is 4 pi r squared. So, integrating, this will become the, this will be the result. The E electric field, then the integral of differential is A, then the limit ranges from 0 to 4 pi r squared, equivalent to Q over permittivity. So, even with the limits, Upper minus lower, we have 4, uh, uh, electric field is 4 pi r squared equals q over permittivity. So therefore, solving for E, we come up with 1 over 4 pi permittivity q over r squared. This is the magnitude of the electric field at a point charge with a distance r. So at any point of this surface with a radius of r, the electric field is 1 over 4 pi permittivity q over r squared and the vector magnetic field of that is the electric field vector is 1 over 4 pi permittivity q over r squared and this is the unit vector the direction of the electric field is in the direction of r call it as r hat okay so this is the answer to the application problem of the electric field at the point charge particle. Next problem is the application of a Gauss law to the electric field of an infinite line charge particle. So consider a line. Now, this is a conductor. So it has a charge of lambda, which is the linear charge density. This is the charge per length. Now, this is an infinite line, so this must be extended to infinity positive and this is going to infinity again going to negative so the line is infinite this is infinite line charge particle now the question is at point p how much is the electric field with a distance of r so what we are asked to calculate the electric field at this point p with a radius of r now, to answer this problem is to use again the Gauss law principle. So we have to enclose the charge to a Gaussian surface. Now take note that this is going to infinity. This is going to an infinite. So therefore, the question is how to enclose this one. Now we can enclose this using our we can use you can we can enclose using the cylinder cylindrical surface so the question is where do we enclose everything the answer is no because this is going to infinite but take note that the charge is on the line charge there is no electric field about this plane the circle plane has no flux because the electric field is going to this side so therefore we can use the we can use the cylinder as if we are enclosing the entire charge for the reason that there is no field on this plane also with the lower bottom of the cylinder because we have no electric field so therefore, there is no flux at that point. So the, the, the flux was on the sides of the cylinder. Okay, so we call this as our Gaussian surface. So consider again an infinitesimal value d part of the cylinder. Then uh, there must be a vector again, differentially. So therefore, in this case, our angle between the differential uh, normal vector to the electric field is equal to zero. So using the formula, 
using the formula of the closed integral of the electric field that infinitesimal big area vector is equivalent to the total enclosed charge over the permittivity. So, expanding this one using the magnitudes of the two vectors, the E and the area vector, we have the E cosine P infinitesimal A or DE, which is equal to the enclosed charge over the permittivity. So, take note that we can assume, we can consider a length of the charge, let us say L. Why? Because we, we are about to substitute the enclosed charge. How much the, is the enclosed charge? So, take note that the line charge has a charge of the linear charge density. So, if we multiply this linear charge density with L, the answer is the charge, the enclosed charge. So, therefore, we can replace this with lambda L. Also, with the uh, take note, P is 0. So, angle is 0. The electric field can be placed outside the symbol. So, the question is, what is the limit of the what is the limit of the integral after integrating the differential area? So, the limit should be start from zero area. Then we will occupy the entire, we can occupy the entire uh, cylinder except the ends of the cylinder. So, take note that if this is the cylinder, this is the cylinder. There is no flux on the circle part of the cylinder, top and bottom, for the reason that there is no electric field. So the electric field only present on this side. So therefore, the area needed for the limits of this integral is the area of this cylinder minus the two circle. So, all you need to do is to cut this one, then consider this as the area. So, therefore, this is the area where this one is L because this is the length of the assumed cylinder. Then, this one is the hypotenuse or the, sorry, the circumference of the circle. So, therefore, the area must be the length times the width. So, therefore, this is the surface area of a cylinder whose, whose width is L and the length is 2 pi r. So the area must be 2 pi r L. This should be the limit from 0. This is from 0 to 2 pi r L. 2 pi r L is the area. So it starts from 0 area and it ends up with the area of the Gaussian surface. Okay? So Therefore, again, the enclosed charge is lambda or the linear charge density times the length divided by the permittivity. Then, evaluate okay, 0 is the angle, so the cosine of 0 is 1. Then, evaluate the integral, so we have E, A with a limit of 0 to 2 pi RL, which is the area, is equal to the Linear charge density over L uh, times L over the permittivity. Sol solving for, evaluating the limit, then solve for the electric field. So the limit now becomes 2 pi RL times E is equal to linear charge density over L uh, times L over the permittivity. So solving for L can be cancelled out. So therefore, our, our electric field is equivalent to the linear charge density divided by 2 pi permittivity times r. So again, this is the magnitude of the electric field at the distance r. Then the vector is the linear charge density divided by 2 pi permittivity r going to r hat direction, in this direction. Okay. So this is for the infinite line charge electric field vector. So, we have also 
this problem. What about the infinite sheet? How much is the the electric field from an infinite sheet particle charge? And we will cal calculate that using the Gauss law. Okay. So consider an infinite sheet. So meaning this can be extended all throughout to going to infinity. So representing this part of the infinite sheet. Part only the infinite sheet. So therefore, uh, all we have to do is to to now take note that the charge given is the surface charge density. Previously, we used the linear charge density because our 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 conductor is a line, but this one our conductor is a surface, or is this a plane or an infinite sheet? So therefore, the charge must be the surface charge density, meaning which means that the the unit now becomes coulomb per meter squared. So we have to enclose again portion of the charge in the infinite sheet with a radius r on this side then take note that there must be an electric field on, that, on it so from the area this electric field therefore there must be a flux on here also with the other side so we call this as the Gaussian surface one in the other side we have also a symmetric surface area host area is A and again there must be an electric field on it then there, therefore there must be a flux also. Now this is our Gaussian surface too. So the question is what is the total flux on this? So therefore we have to add the flux at this side added by this surface flux of the surface two adding the two surfaces flux is equivalent to the enclosed charge over the permittivity so therefore the flux at surface one representing p sub is one added by the flux at the surface two is equivalent to the enclosed charge which is the surface charge density times the area area occupied divided by the permittivity now take note that the flux is the the close integral of the electric field dot de so therefore this one must be the electric field multiplied by a because a is perpendicular electric field is perpendicular to surface a so therefore it is simply as the product of the electric field times the area. Also with the surface 2, it is also equivalent to the electric field times the area. So adding the 2. So we have now Ea plus Ea is equal to the surface charge density times the area divided by the permittivity. And this one is equal to 2A Ea equals the surface charge density times area divided by the permittivity then a can, area can be cancelled so we come up with the electric field of the of the infinite sheet be equal to the surface charge density divided by 2 permittivity now notice that the electric field does not depend on the distance at any point from the the sheet the electric field is q over to permittivity okay now last application is for the parallel plates the question is how much is the electric field within the parallel plates we understand that the electric field at the parallel plates are constant therefore it distance doesn't matter so how much is that electric field? So in order to answer that is to consider the the Gaussian surface A whose our area is A and we have also this Gaussian surface on the negative side. Now take note that there is no flux here. The flux is already also already pre, uh, only present at this phase of the cylinder. This is a cylinder. Uh, Gaussian surface 
then this is also the Gaussian surface on the negative charge. So there is no flux at the bottom of this uh, cylinder, but the flux is only at this point. Now take note that these are symmetric. So therefore, whatever flux here will be the same here. So in order to find the, to use the Gauss law again, use this formula for the enclosed E cosine PDE is equal to the enclosed charge over primitive permittivity. This is simply as the area times the electric field. If you multiply area by the electric field, or electric field times the area, this is already the enclosed. Now take note that we can use any of these surfaces because they are the same. Whatever flux here will be the same as here. So therefore, this is simply as EA is equal to the surface charge density times the area of the Gaussian surface, then divided by the permittivity. Take note that there is no, at the side of the, or the uh, curved part of the cylinder, there is no flux because the electric field is going to this direction. The electric flux is only the circle part, one end of the circle part. So therefore, area, we use the area A. So this area A will be cancelled, so leaving us the electric field of, of the parallel plates is just the surface charge density divided by the permittivity. So, at any distance of the parallel plates between them, the electric field is the surface charge density divided by the permittivity, which means that the distance between the parallel plates will not affect to the magnitude of the electric field. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you. See you in my next video.